Hi, I'm Doug Clark from the University of California, Berkeley, and the Editor-in-Chief of Biotechnology and Bioengineering. I'm here in the hills above Charlottesville, Virginia, on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of Biotechnology and Bioengineering, and I'm here to interview and reminisce with Elmer Gaden, the founding editor of the journal, the father of biochemical engineering, and as we're about to learn, a whole lot more than that. Can you tell me a little bit about what inspired you to start what has now become biotechnology and bioengineering? I was invited to start it by, uh, by the uh, people who were running what was then Wiley, I think it was Wiley into science, it was before it became, uh, no, it was into science publishers. And uh, they uh, had started this little company and in England, a group had started a journal and they had made some deal, uh, this is all before, really I'm not familiar with with the English group and so the, for the first few years at least it was actually published in England so when manuscripts were accepted I had to pack them up in an envelope, take them down to the post office and mail them to England <laughs> so that's how it started and there was an old gent, nice guy but past his prime and he was the point as the editor, but he was, didn't do a damn thing, you know. <laughs> and one of the things he did was to walk off for summer vacation with a whole lot of manuscripts in his briefcase and never looked at them. So these, man, these uh, writers, the people who sent in the manuscripts started writing in and saying, what happened to my manuscript? I haven't heard anything at all. And they traced down and he was sitting up somewhere in Scotland enjoying the countryside with his briefcase full of manuscripts. So, so when you started there was already a backlog of manuscripts that uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy had in I his briefcase. I don't remember clearly. I know that I was, that's the first time I went to Europe. They sent me over to London to find out what was going on. And I remember that the name of the person was some typically English name and very proper, just initials. J.B. Ponsfort or something like this. And I went down to the office. I found where the office was in London. First time I'd been in Europe. And uh, I knocked on the door. It was a little, little tiny office. Opened the door and there was this absolutely stunning girl standing there, young woman. And she was the, <laughs> she was the one who, I'd only had the name with initials. I didn't realize a woman. Initially, the original title of the journal was Journal of Biochemical oh and Microbiological Technology and Engineering. Yeah. Now, who came up with that title? It was a, it was a title by committee, <laughs> really, literally. The publishers, me, a couple, I, I don't remember, but it was a monstrosity. So did you feel at the time there was a need for a new journal in this area? I uh, probably thought it was a great opportunity for me. I mean, it probably was a little bit selfish in that sense. On the other hand, there was a need, and uh, I knew that. There are these papers in this field of applied biology or biotechnology, or whatever you want to call it, were scattered all over the place. So this was a legitimate effort to get a, a good publishing vehicle. And I tried, I didn't really have any experience. I didn't know much about the publishing business, but I did try to uh, make a good job of it. That is, have the, the quality of the publication to be high. And I, uh, fortunately, by then I had built up a lot of friendships around, in Europe especially and all, and uh, mainly many of them by correspondence. I'd never been there. I'd met them by just writing back and forth. I don't remember the reasons. So I was able to lean on some of these people to review for me. I had no experience whatsoever, absolutely none. So I learned on the job. Uh, so, so you were the editor for, editor-in-chief for 25 years. I guess so, yeah. And in fact, uh, people still remember your famous handwritten correspondence. Yeah, I used to write it by hand. All of your correspondence was by hand. And uh, the Xerox machine had arrived by then, so <laughs> bang, and that was it. Did, did you read every manuscript yourself? Yeah, I read them to, mostly to determine who I would send it to. Yeah, yeah. And then... Some of them, where I could see it was 
junk, you know, I would simply return it and I'd probably lie a little and say it had been reviewed or something and then it was me, <laughs> but I didn't say that. So how did you find the time to be the editor of the flagship journal in the field while you were busy doing all of your other academic well, I was and teaching, yeah. Yeah, you had a full, full schedule and all right. It was busy, but I certainly didn't have a feel that I was under ridiculous pressure. I used to live out, you see, I lived out on Long Island, first with my parents, then uh, later in law with uh, my, my own family. But that was a over an hour trip on the railroad. And that was a lot of work got done on that railroad, sitting in on this way. A lot of the handwritten correspondence oh, was done on the yeah, railroad. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>